And greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to another edition of Oh Man, That's Awful on Radio Titans, coming to you from our glorious studios in Los Angeles. As always, I'm your uh, co-host, Carl Kozlowski, and with me is... I'm Kevin Corcoran. And today, we have a very excited to have... uh, Guy who invented kind of a worldwide phenomenon in the world of comedy list. We'll let him uh, describe it succinctly to you, but it's uh, in general sort of an improv uh, approach to stand up comedy. And it's uh, taken the world by storm. Even Robin Williams has dropped uh, with it and uh, all sorts of other people. And uh, we're very excited to have him here telling some crazy stories from his life today, some funny, awful ones. Give it up. For Mr. Troy Conrad, how you doing? Hey, good. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Don't expect a round of applause. It's not how this works. Yeah, yeah well, give totally it up. Okay. I guess it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> we'll just say thank you. Uh, yeah, so um, I guess first off, maybe explain to people uh, about Setlist for those who don't know um, how long it's been around and uh, where it. Uh, as well, it's been around now. God, we're going on just over seven years. And. Uh, it's a show I started based on uh, improvising stand-up on stage. Like I found – like when I was working the clubs, I started I, – I get bored really easily is what it is. So uh, I enjoyed going up there and having a chance at failing as opposed to uh, doing the same thing and getting a good response. And I found out there's a lot of other comics who like that too. They just don't have the opportunity always. So – uh, what I did is I put together, uh, you know, improvised stand up has been around forever, but I, I just put a, a, a unique way to do it, which is writing the most bizarre, weird type of suggestions that, that have never been on any comedian's set list in the history of comedy. Like if you took every comic CD and set list and lined them all up, you'd not find these things on them, right? But it's like random two word phrases, basically. Um, sometimes they're two word. Uh, it could be a, a, a whole topic or a sentence or it could be some letters that don't even fit together i mean you you never know what the, these weird things are going to be all you know is you're probably going to be some do you have any of your head just for um yeah yeah there's a, oh, okay so i write uh, i've written let's see probably over twenty thousand unique set list topics right and uh, when people ask hey what's one i, I have no idea <laughs> it's funny. no idea written twenty thousand um uh, uh, the, the last one I wrote was uh, Abstinence Twister. There you go. <laughs> wow. So Abstinence Twister. Sure. Um, Carl, you got anything on that? Uh, not really. Okay, okay. I've, never, I've right. never played the game. All right. So. Yeah. You've never so, played Twister. No, uh, I've never played a set list. <laughs> oh, okay. No, yeah. well, you've done. I think you played in the on, on the show. About I that? don't know. I've oh, actually, okay, I no, thought we played around oh, there a while back. Maybe when you're on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. perhaps. I don't know, but never yeah, yeah. at a show. Yeah. No, no, not at a show, but on the yeah. radio. Um, so uh, we might give somebody something like that, and uh, and they get zero seconds to prepare. They see it on a screen in the moment, same time as the audience does, and then they uh, they improvise as if that's what they've been doing forever. Like that's like it's not like what jokes can I think of? It's Oh yeah, I've been doing this bit for since the '90s on cruise ships. So, um, and then very quickly got picked up. I partnered with Paul Provenza. We took it to Edinburgh, and uh, the first year we took it, some some uh, production company uh, liked it, and they pitched it to Sky Atlantic, Rupert Murdoch's company, and Rupert Murdoch uh, paid a bunch of money to make it a TV series in the UK, and then a, a company in Australia bought it. And uh, and it showed in both countries. It went into reruns in uh, Australia. Wow. Okay. And so yeah, twelve episodes. Of, you know, it was Robin Williams, it was Gilbert Godfrey, yeah. Paul F. Tompkins, Drew Carey, Bob uh, Odenkirk, a b- uh, bunch of UK did comics. Bob Odenkirk did the web series. Couldn't you get anybody? Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. Well, uh, Todd Bear, all these great comics. Uh, T. J. Miller, they loved doing it. Maria Bamford did it, um, and uh, it was. Just you know, it was a blast. It was also a really challenging, crazy thing to uh, to do. So, is the idea to do a bit about each of those words back to back, or to really come up with something that would be, say, absent as twister? No, 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 no. So, it's not about um, what jokes and go. It's no, it's it's about. What does that inspire if that were on your set list? Like, Absent oh. Twister. Oh, you guys, this is my bit. Like, I'm going to give you a bad example of how to start it. You wouldn't start it process. Ah, so this is the inner monologue. Ah, I, I guess they want to hear my uh, famous bit on abstinence <laughs> that I've actually never heard before. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Like, that's what your brain would be saying. Not how am I going <laughs> to think of this, whatever. And so you just start talking. And you just go, 
you know, you guys ever get really kinky, but you're Christian? (laughs) (laughs) Like, that might be an opening line for that, right? Your opening line is like the rudder that sets the ship in the right direction. So, now, you could end on that, or you can let that launch you into the sea and uh, (laughs) see where it goes, see how deep you go. Have you ever seen anybody just stare blankly at the audience for, like... In, yeah, inordinate amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Early in the show, that happened as because it was a, still a newer show and people mm-hmm. were figuring it out. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, w- actually, we had uh, a comic. Everybody in here would know who it was. He uh, he did. It was a small show we did in uh, in Los Angeles, and there's a lot of other comics in the room. And it was a really cool show. And he went up there and just was like. I, I, I don't get it. Can, can you put the next one? And so we put the next one. He goes, I, I, this doesn't make any sense. And then he goes, you know what? I, I don't even want to do this. And he went and he sat down. And I got back up there and I was kind of uncomfortable, right? Because on that level, no one's ever done that. Also, yeah. somebody who I, I specifically, um, you know, usually like I have to, I have sometimes a backlog of a year before I can get people, sometimes two years before I can get people on a show. And this was a guy that I wrote to, and I was like, I think you're going to be amazing on this show. Will you please? Yeah, I'll come do it. And, uh, and so here's what happened. He sat in the audience, and then he watched other people do it. And then literally like halfway through the show that night, he goes, hey, hey I, I want to go up. I think I can do it. I think I can do it now. And he went up, and he crushed it. That sounds sort of Larry Davidian. Uh, yeah, that does sound like it'd be a scene <laughs> of, like that Larry David would do. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, totally overcame so adversity. The branch of idiots, I don't yeah, know. sure. Yeah. Let, let me ask you a question: uh, Is the topic assignment, or you know, the the phrases? Because I've seen uh, Celeste, I've done it uh, at Flappers when you when you do like the uh, yeah, we yeah, do an open, open mic, mic on Fridays at five. Yeah. It's a good time. Um, is it totally random, or do you come up with stuff like you know, say you're prepping for a show and Let's use Robin Williams as an example, only because he's yeah. not going to be able to do this show. Uh, sorry to say, but like when you're coming up with topics, you're oh god, this would be. I would love to see Robin Williams riff on this. Let's put that in the stack for the show he's doing later this month. Yeah. So, uh, so for the most part, the show is the topics are going to be random for people, uh, with the exception of the TV show where it was ninety percent we picked the topics for the person. Because um, it's TV, and you also – one of the main things is you have to make sure that you're not giving Robin Williams the bit about lollipops that he has already or whatever. Right, yeah. you know, so we would like you – know, me and Paul Provenza, who's my partner on the show and the person who made all this amazing stuff happen, um, he, we, he and I would just go through everything. We'd write these topics. And then we would uh, we would go. Okay, does Robin have a bit about this? No, he doesn't have a bit about this. And so you know, like I remember in the web series he did he did that one too, the Nerdist series on you. Uh, I know his topic was introvert dictator. That was his first topic. <laughs> and another one was like gun slash candy store. <laughs> um, and and but that night he just dropped in, so we had to just give him what was there already, like topics that were like extras that were on that keynote. Like I couldn't add anything. So. Um, you know, but it was great. So we wanted to always give him stuff that, um, you know, that would uh, not be a bit that he had because mm-hmm. he liked – he loved to be thrown a loop. Like the really good comics, they really like having something that's like way out of their comfort zone because that's what the show's about. Gotcha. So um, was, was there ever any uh, particularly awful uh, incident uh, that came out of it or uh – well, yeah, there, there's been all kinds of challenges with the show. I mean, yeah. um, so when we did the TV show, yeah. um, we worked with the production company. Uh, issues that came up with the getting comics to fly over and stuff. Like for one, um, we had T.J. Miller out on the show. Every show we did a, like a 7 o'clock and then like a 9.30. And we, huh. ta- we taped the same comics twice. We gave them different topics, but they wore the same thing so we could edit it together. Um, and what happened was, first of all, uh, this is what I learned. Every uh, early show that we did ever for every single taping, including the Nerdist series, uh, and they were always like 7 o'clock, they were all the shittiest crowds I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like literally you could not have asked for a more silent – it was like watching boxing in Japan. Like just nobody <laughs> nobody made a peep no matter what was happening on stage. <laughs> So, uh, so that was a huge challenge because the comics are getting fed on this energy. Right. So yeah. there's no way that they can perform as well. 
So they'd be like, oh, I felt like that was such a hard set. Then they'd go up and do different topics uh, with a crowd that was like into it, and uh, it was amazing. So that, like, that was one thing. We had T.J. Miller fly out, and his plane was super late. And he was flying. He was going to get there. It was tight anyway. He's like just in time for makeup. And instead, he missed the entire first show where he was supposed to have a set on that first part. Um, and then the second show already started. His plane hasn't even landed yet, and we're having to start the second show. And oh. this is the only time he can do it. It's our last night of the London run, right? And uh, he got in, like, he, he walked into the studio, into the, onto the set, like, when the last comic was on. <laughs> the last comic of the night. They did makeup like while he was walking because you have to have makeup. Like you can't just send somebody out there with no makeup. No. And like he had literally never been to the UK before. <laughs> had just flown in, ran at the cars, weaving through traffic, and he walked on without. Like we didn't even get to talk to him. He just literally was getting makeup brushed on him, and he walked on stage and did two sets. Nice. And it was both of them were the most phenomenal thing of the entire yeah, night. That's awesome. Like he, and no one had ever even in that room had never even heard of TJ Miller. N- none of them. And they were all like, wow, <laughs> incredible. Like that's how good he is. He's just a monster. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. He's pro- yeah, like, you know, people ask me who's the best in the world at that show. I, and there is no answer. It's like saying, what's the best painting at the Louvre? Right. <laughs> but I oh, really, that's easy. I really, right. It's easy. And it's not the most popular one. I bet. Um, but, like, it, there is no way to answer that because it's, it's art. But uh, for, you know, one of the main people that I love watching on the show because of how creative he is is TJ because he's, he's just off the map. And he's so – it's really about agreement. The entire show, if you want to solve the puzzle of it, you're, extre- you're an extremist in agreeing with everything no matter how ludicrous it is. Wow. Okay. It's got that in common with improv, I guess. You just yeah. have to – Yeah, totally. Yes, and yourself. Well, yeah. and that's that's one of the things because uh, especially Mike uh, version, you know, I've I've seen people go up where, you know, I I saw one guy who like every topic, oh, this is hard, yeah. and it's like you know internal yeah, I, monologue. That's yeah, no. you can, and you make it look easy that of doing the show. Yeah, that's why we set it up now, and we say because once you do that, you're basically you're. You're being um, what's the tech like the clinical term like a a, a little bitch about it, <laughs> and here's and I really and I really mean that because what you're doing is you're trying to undermine yourself and what you're doing you're saying hey I can get out of this now because I'm gonna secretly just tell everyone oh that's hard and then like you know we had a comic one time do this in uh, in the UK she I figured out I figured out her pattern we've never had somebody do do this but and she she was like one of those like popular comics who'd like had a good publicist and she wasn't funny but she like got really famous and she'd be on the cover of magazines and blah 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 so she was it Dane Cook no 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 (laughs) you wouldn't we would no one would eat America would know her but she's really famous in in Mm. the UK and she would go oh boy okay so let's go ahead and start like she'd get up there she'd go she'd go by the way I've had three glasses of wine so I hope this goes well it's like Oh, you know what you're doing? Huh. You're setting it up so that because you know you're not funny and you can't do the show, and you know you don't even give a shit about it because like that it's a person who really just cares about how much how famous can I be, not what risks can I take, what how good can I get? And um, so she would do that. She would set it up, and then she'd be like, "Oh my gosh, okay, I'm I'm too drunk to do that one." Turns out she kept doing this in different countries. I'd see her uh-huh. do it because I'm always there at the shows, running in the back, and. I'd watch her. She didn't have anyone. Wow. I watched a show where, like, she was there like two or three hours earlier. She didn't have anyone. She went up there. Oh my gosh, you guys! I've had like two or three. Go- so that was like her like hacky shtick. Why stop there though? Why not just like I just banged an entire foil of heroin? <laughs> right, right, right. This totally. could go either way. Oh yeah. <laughs> but why, why keep inviting her back if she sucked? Uh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll tell you. That's one of the struggles of the show. Oh. So, um, so she's. Uh, so it wasn't me, by the way. I actually said – I asked her, yeah, the, uh, might be the only person. There, no, there's two people that I said, please, can we never, ever, ever have them on the show again? And now she's not been back on it. But when it comes to like the festivals that we do and we're trying to book big names that draw people, um, You know, um, the people that help us with the show. Like, like now I don't go to Edinburgh every year. Now 